Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Liberate Your API, building a task manager inside SANIC. Uh, as you probably know from some of the other content uh, at this conference, uh, I'll be hanging out in a breakout room. So if you have any questions, want to say hello, uh, please feel free to, to uh, jump in there. Happy to, uh, to meet you and talk with you. So my name is Adam Hopkins. I am a lead senior software engineer with Packet Fabric. Uh, Packet Fabric is a network as a service platform. Um, I am also one of the core maintainers of the SANIC project, which is what we're going to be talking about here today. Um, okay, so we're going to assume you've already know how to build an API. You already built it. The API is done. It's fantastic. It's one of the best things you've ever built, except there's sort of this problem. It's running a lot slower than you wanted it to. Now, there's definitely a lot of different things that could be wrong here. And I, I've listed out some of the different problems that you might go through and you might try to troubleshoot and figure out where is your slowdown coming from. But what I want to focus on here today is this last one, slow operations. And by this, I mean sort of two things. Number one, we could be fetching a lot of data. And every time that we need to go to a database or some third-party service, um, we're dealing with sort of I.O. bound um, 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 performance issues. Now, the other thing that could have happened is the computational issues, and these are the CPU bound. So there's two different types of, uh, of problems that we could be running into. And one of the solutions that we might want to try to deal with is taking this stuff and pushing it off to some third-party service like Celery or one of the one of the one of these packages that's already built there to do this. So this is a, a valid solution. We'll talk a little bit about what that looks like. Another thing that you might want to do, um, and this is a SANIC specific operation called add task. And this is uh, a huge lifesaver inside SANIC if you've worked with the project before. Um, you could do a lot of things using this and I highly, highly, highly recommend you, you get used to it um, and figure out, you know, it's one of those things inside uh, async IO once you sort of, you know, clicks with you how to uh, use tasks. It's, um, it's a very powerful tool. Okay. Third option that I want to present to you is building a task manager inside of SANIC directly. We're going to do that in process. And then we're also going to build one that is a sub-process task queue. So we've got four different solutions here. Let's quickly take a little run through them. So option number one, this is where we're going to take some work. You know, we've identified that uh, we got some really slow stuff. We're going to take this slow stuff and we're just going to push it off to some other server. We're going to say, Celery, you, you go handle this for me. Um, you know, one thing that I think is really helpful here that I want to point out um, with Celery is that it's going to keep track of everything for you. So you send this off and you get this task object here, which allows you to, to output a task ID here. And the reason this is important, because if you notice, we're returning a 202. What does 202 mean? This is an HTTP code that basically says, I took your request. I'm doing something with it. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but just so you know, I've accepted it um, and, and something's happening. And that's really all we're doing here. Something's happening. We've got an ID. So that means that at some later point, you know, you can put this ID into a URL and we can go and we can look it up and we can figure out what's going on with this. Very, uh, very handy pattern that we've got here. Okay. What's another option that we have here? Uh, say we don't want to go through all the expense and build out of, you know, of launching another server. Um, you know, you need to have some sort of message broker. So we want, we want to try to simplify the whole thing. So let's look at what these background tasks look like. Now, if you're familiar with async IO, and there's a, there's a function on the loop called create task, and 
really that's basically what we're doing here is just a little bit of of a wrapper around this as well but basically what we're doing is we're saying we've got this function here called send email and we want to take this and push it out of our request response cycle so our request comes in we're going to handle the registration we want this to be inside of our request um, and, and, and that way, if, you know, maybe there's some sort of an exception or something goes wrong, um, the response is going to come back to the user and say, hey, there is a problem here. Uh, but maybe the email, you know, this is, this is sort of a classic example of a great way to speed up the time that you get a response back to users by, by doing something like this, where you take, take operations like sending an email and, and, and take them outside of, of this response cycle. So really simple, um, very powerful. I, I highly, highly recommend you take a look at this one and get used to it. Okay, let's do something a little bit more, more complex here. What are we gonna do? Um, one of the things that Sanic provides is a sort of life cycle around all of our servers. So what we're saying is after the server is going to start, we're going to run this here. What are we going to do? We're going to create a queue. We're going to create a couple of workers. And notice we've got this add task again. We've got a couple of workers, and we're just going to pass them this queue. So what does that work? What does that mean? Well, really, in this context, um, all it's going to be is, is a loop. We're going to, we're going to go enter this loop. We're going to check out that queue. If there's a message on it, we're going to do something. We're going to create a job, uh, and then we're just going to do this over and over and over and over again. Um, so what would this look like? Well, one of the ways that you could use this is you've got an endpoint, and you're going to all you need to do is put something into that queue. And as soon as you do it, uh, those other tasks are going to be able to see it and they're going to be able to do something with it. So notice we've got the same thing here. We've got a 202. Now, if you recall, back here in our cellular operation, we were responding with this task ID. So what if we still want to be able to do that? Well, we could do that. We could create an ID. We could put that into our, into our, um, our job queue here. And now we've got it. Um, but the problem with this is because we're running inside of our worker processes, this is not going to scale very well. So if you want to scale horizontally and, and put out a couple of different servers, um, now you've got the problem where this ID is only going to, you're only going to be able to look this up on one of your servers. So um, Maybe for small operations, um, uh, and especially for when you don't need to check on the status of it later, I think this is a really, really nice, um, helpful, helpful pattern. But let's go to the next level here. So what are our requirements? We want to generate a unique ID. Um, we need to be able to store what happens to that job so that at a later date, we can come back and take a look at it. Uh, using our using our unique ID, and of course the most important thing here is we are not blocking that request response cycle. We want to take all that work and push it off so that we can get a nice fast response back to our users. So, what are we going to do? We're going to build this little project. I, I call it a stage the this the Sanic asynchronous job executor. So, let's just take a quick look at what this is here. So. We've got our server, okay? And we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these lifecycle events again. Now this main process start means that um, when, our, when our server starts up, not all the individual workers that are gonna be responding to requests, but when the, when the master process starts up, we wanna run this Sage runner. And then when it stops, we're gonna stop it. So what is the Sage Runner? Well, right now we're just starting here. So all it's gonna do is it's gonna create a sub process. It's gonna create a queue and it's gonna execute this manage function here, which 
uh, as you can see, doesn't really do too much yet, but let's just take a look at it and see what happens. Okay, so like I said, Sanic created this, this main process here. We can see the process ID 26234. Now, what it also did is we told it that we were gonna have two workers. So we can see our two worker processes here. And then it created our Sage worker process here. So we've got three sub processes in our main process. Okay. So now that we've got that running, let's go to the next level and see what happens, how we could try to make this a little bit more interactive. So what are we gonna do now? So same thing, we're gonna start our, our, our runner and we're gonna stop our runner when the process starts and stops. And we're going to add in an endpoint. And this endpoint is going to send something, okay? So what does that mean? Well, that send function is down here at the bottom. What does that do? It's just putting something in the queue. It looks very similar to sort of what we were talking about with the in-process queue, where we're just putting something into the queue. Um, and now we can see that, that what we're gonna be running is this consumer. This consumer, it, again, looks similar to what we did before. We've got a loop. We're just going to run it over and over and over again, and we're going to be waiting on this queue. And when we, once, that, once something happens, uh, we see it on the queue, we're going to just log it out for now. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay. And now you can see we've got this loop, and every single time it's logging out here that it's, it's waiting for something. So let's send our request. And you can see we've got a request. It came into our SANIC worker. Our SANIC worker pushed something into, into the queue and our SAGE worker picked up that job and just outputted it. So we can just do this over and over and over and over again. Now let's give it a stop command. This here you can see is just our way of breaking out of this, this loop here. So we shut that down and clear it all out. So now let's build upon this a little bit further. Okay, so now, What are we doing here? This is our, our full operational solution. Okay, so now we've got our server. It looks almost identical, identical to what we did before. Um, we're setting a little bit more of a structured information here. Um, as we talked about, we wanna have this unique ID so that we can reference it later on. Um, and you can see we've got some, some arguments, we've got a task name, so, so a little bit and a little bit more, uh, more details here. So let's take a look again. This consumer is gonna work almost exactly like what we just looked at, okay? Um, what I do wanna point out here is uh, we wanna be able to run everything inside async IO. This is, this is an important thing because this is, um, you know, we're, we're, built, we're you know, working with SANIC, so all of our code base is gonna already be async IO ready. Um, so, we're gonna run this consumer inside of an executor. And this is a way that we can take a non-async function and turn it into async function. And the reason that we're doing that is so that ultimately when we are gonna be running that job, um, we can run it inside of an async IO task. So it can be a waitable. So one of the important things that I do wanna point out here is when you start creating a whole bunch of tasks, especially when you're talking about something that's going to be in the background process, uh, what happens when um, there's a server crash or when you, want to, when you want to turn the server down or something like that? You need to make sure that there's some way that you can stop anything that's running. So, so here you can see where we're running this loop, um, the, the schedule loop. And when it's done, we, we have this drain process here where we're gonna go through, we're gonna look at every single task that we created. 
we're going to say that you've got some amount of time to clean up. Um, and if not, then we're just going to shut it off um, and shut the whole process down. So this, this, is, this is a good pattern to make sure that you, you're, you're going to be using something like this. So what are we doing here? We're, we're looking at this job at create. So let's go take a look at this, what this does. So job create, what it's going to do um, is it's going to, to run this down here. Now this pattern is an async uh, context manager. And so this is just sort of a fancy way of saying run this function, then run that function. And we're gonna wrap that all around whatever's inside the block. So the reason that we're doing this is because we want to sort of keep track of what's going on with our task. So we're going to send some information to a backend server uh, somewhere so we can sort of store the details about it when it starts, when it stops, um, et cetera, so that we've got some sort of persistent state. Um, but really what's happening is we're executing our task. So how do we get this task? As you can see, we've got a registry. We're doing a lookup on it, um, and then we're executing it. And executing just means task.run. So let's go take a look at what task.run looks like. So this is sort of, I guess, uh, the interface that you'd be building out with and you'd be running um, all your different tasks because you'd create a you know, subclass, you'd give it a name and you've got a function here. And so right now, you know, again, we just got like a nice little loop here. So let's take a look to see what this one would look like. So we're gonna issue our command and you can see we sent a job. Let's go back and take a look at that. We sent a job, here's the, the, the details of what we sent. You can see it here. Um, our, our, our server found it, found the task and now it ran that task. Now notice we've got this, this, I, this ID down here so we can, we can copy this and now we can do a quick little lookup on it. There we go. Now we can see that the task was complete. We've got a timestamp. We know when it completed. Uh, we can see what we, we passed, what uh, what arguments we passed it with. And you know, we could take this and we could, you know, we can sort of mash on it and we can send a whole bunch of things. And you can see it's going to run a whole bunch of different tasks. And it's all it's all async. Um, we've got all a record of all these different tasks here, and we can, you know, we can look them all up. There we go. Um, so that's the process. Um, you know, it's obviously sort of a, a proof of concept here, um, just a sort of fun little project. And the kind of idea is just to kind of, you know, make you make you think a little bit about, um, you know, how are we going to um, get the response back to our users, um, and what kind of things can we push off to the back end, and you know, we need to try to create a solution that's going to make sense for the work that we're trying to do. So um, I guess that's all for now. If you've got questions, put them on, hop over to the breakout room or put them into the chat. Um, uh, thank you very much. All right. Take care.